High second grade students, today's story is from Knowledge 8, Lesson 7, called Insects That Glow and Sing. Before I begin our story, I'm going to go over our vocabulary words. Our first vocab word for today's story is the word bioluminescence. Repeat after me, bioluminescence. Bioluminescence is the light given off by some plants and animals, such as fireflies, caused by a biochemical reaction. Our next vocabulary word is the word communicate. Say, communicate. Communicate means to share or exchange information. Our last vocabulary word is the word lanterns. Say, lanterns. Lanterns are the part of a firefly's abdomen that produces light. Can you blink, boys and girls? So can I. Does your abdomen light up when you blink? No? Are you sure? How can you tell? Turn to your neighbor and ask him or her to watch your abdomen while you blink. Did it glow? No? Well, I'm not really surprised. If humans were able to produce their own light, they might never have invented the electric light bulb. We fireflies have been around long before electricity or even candles. Our light organs, called lanterns, are located in our transparent or see-through abdomens. On fireflies, lanterns are the body part that produces light. When humans first discovered us lighting up the forest, they were amazed by how much light we produced. In ancient China and Japan, people collected us in transparent jars and used us as lanterns to find their way in the dark. They named us fireflies, but we are not like flies at all, and our light, unlike fire, is actually cold. Cold light is the way our ancestors explained our beautiful magical light. Scientists now know that chemical reactions create the light, and they describe this process with a much bigger word. They call it bioluminescence. Can you say that? Bio means living and lumen means light. I think that's a good name for it, don't you? We are living lights. Other animals and plants glow or light up like tiny electric bulbs, but most of them live in the ocean. Certain types of squid, jellyfish, corals, and even sharks glow beneath the water. Plants such as algae in the ocean can also glow on the surface of the water. At times, this bioluminescence is so bright that it looks as if someone flipped a light switch on beneath the water. It's less common to find land animals that glow or give off light. I've told you that we're called fireflies, but do any of you call us by another name? We're also called lightning bugs, but we're neither flies nor bugs. We're actually beetles, another group of insects. Let's take a closer look and see. Like all insects, we have three body parts, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen, six legs, two antenna, an exoskeleton, and like most insects, we have two pairs of wings. We undergo a complete metamorphosis, changing from egg to larva to pupa to adult. Some of our eggs and larvae even glow. Have you ever heard of a glowworm? Glowworms are misnamed. They're not worms at all. The larva of fireflies and other insects are often called glowworms because they live on the ground like worms do and they glow in the dark. In order for any animals to survive, they must reproduce or have babies. That means we must all work hard to attract mates. Fireflies glow when they are seeking mates. The males fly through the dark flashing very specific signals to females who sit patiently and wait for them. Our yellowish green lights stand out against the night sky as we signal one another with special codes. When a female recognizes a male's code as being from the same species or type, she flashes the same code back to him and the male lands beside her. Have you ever noticed how some fireflies flash co close to the ground with one pattern, but others seem to be higher in the air with a different flash pattern at a slightly later time of night? These are males of different species attracting their own females. Watch us next summer and you'll see what I mean. Hi there. I bet you're surprised to see me today. I'm not bioluminescent. I don't glow, but I do sing. That's what I want to talk to you about today. Other ways that insects communicate or share information. Fireflies are silent communicators, flashing their glowing lights back and forth. How do you communicate with one another? You talk, don't you? And what do you do to talk? You use your mouths, of course. Although we insects use mouths for eating just like you, we have no vocal cords or voice boxes so we don't use them for talking and singing. Even so, we grasshoppers can be noisy bunch. 
Have you ever heard grasshoppers sing on a summer day? You won't hear any words, but you'll definitely hear a chorus of sounds. Just like birds, each type of grasshopper produces a different song. If you listen closely, you can tell the type of grasshopper that's singing by its song. Nearly all grasshoppers have two pairs of wings, but we seldom use them for flying because we spend so much of our lives low to the ground. Male grasshoppers use their wings for communicating with one another. Female grasshoppers do not sing, but they listen very carefully. They hear our sounds with tympanum, eardrums on the sides of their abdomens. Grasshoppers, locusts, and crickets all make sounds by rubbing body parts together. Sometimes two wings and sometimes a leg and a wing. To make sounds, I lift my wings and rub the front wings together. The vein, composed of tiny teeth on the bottom of one wing, rubs against the sharp edge or scraper on the top of the other wing. It is a little like rubbing your fingers along the teeth of a comb. As the two parts rub together, the wings vibrate, moving back and forth rapidly to produce the sounds that you hear. You may be familiar with my cousin, the katydid. Katydids have long antenna just like me. As they rub their front wings together, it sounds like they're calling out, Katie did, Katie did. Their high-pitched calls become faster and faster as the outside temperature rises. Some people even say that you can tell how hot it is by the number of times per second a Katie did chirps. If Katie dids live in your part of the world and you are patient enough, you may want to try counting the number of chirps you hear every five seconds. Add 39 to that number and you may have an accurate reading of the temperature depending on the species of katydid you're hearing. In some Asian countries, in a tradition that has been practiced for thousands of years, male crickets have been kept in cages as singing pets. Do you know where the ears of a cricket are located? You may remember that female grasshoppers hear with special parts on their abdomens, but crickets have ears on their forelegs, or the front of their legs. Both places must seem a little strange to you since your ears are on the sides of your head. But before I leave today, I want to introduce you to another singing insect. These insects are often mistaken for grasshoppers and crickets because they look a lot like us. Does anyone remember what the name of this insect is called? This is a cicada. Cicadas are related to aphids, leafhoppers, and spittlebugs. Unlike grasshoppers and crickets, many cicadas have strong wings and are fast flyers. Male cicadas produce incredibly loud songs but they do not use their legs and wings to make those sounds. Look closely at the abdomen of a cicada. On its underside, close to the thorax, a cicada has a pair of sound-producing organs called timbals. These ribbed membranes are a little like the skin of a drum. The cicada uses its muscles to vibrate these drum-like organs. The timbals pop and click as they move in and out. Their sound is amplified or made louder inside the mostly hollow abdomen acting like a drum and creating a loud buzzing song. The shrill sound of hundreds or thousands of cicadas singing together on a warm summer evening may be very, very loud. Grasshoppers, crickets, and cicadas all use sound to communicate in much the same way that fireflies use their lights. Males attract females for the purpose of mating, making sure that these winged insects will continue to survive. Next time you gather to discuss insects, you'll learn about the largest group of insects on Earth. Can anyone guess what that might be?